Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Monday and happy start to kind of really the last week of July here and it has been a uh, interesting month. Started a lot more active than maybe it's ending, but uh, we've also had some interesting pattern changes this month. So, uh, you know, definitely, you know, it's been an interesting one, but um, overall things are pretty quiet out there. Now we do have a little bit of some severe weather to watch out for this afternoon, as well as some flooding potential uh, really through much of this week. But all things considered, we're in a pretty pretty big lull uh, compared to what we saw with Barrel and what we're probably going to see once we hit August uh, with the Atlanta hurricane season. So uh, I'm excited though. I think uh, the channel is going to have a lot of really cool changes coming up. So, um, you know, just kind of keep an eye out on that, especially as we get into August, you'll probably see some, uh, you know, cool new ideas I've got that I'm going to try to implement here. Uh, and again, I'm excited about it, but uh, for now, we're going to just keep on trucking through these kind of slow times. Uh, also, do want to say thank you to everyone that uh, checked out the Scud Spotter podcast episode two last night. If you missed it, you can find that on the channel. Uh, it's uh, kind of the pinned video right now, uh, although I'll probably change that in a minute, but uh, it's also under the podcast tab. So uh, again, you can find that. Uh, me and Mitch talked about Storm Chase and what it's like in real life compared to maybe what you saw in the new Twisters movie, uh, although there were no spoilers, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, and yeah, we just talked about some other fun stuff. So that was a lot of fun. Again, go check that out if you haven't. Uh, with that said, though, let's go ahead and start talking some weather here. So uh, right now, again, we've kind of just got this boundary we've been talking about continuing to kind of drape itself across the country. And with that, we've got a little kind of piece of energy that's going to ride along this. Uh, and we could see some strong to severe storms, including a couple isolated tornadoes in the circled area on your map through much of eastern North Carolina and uh, southeastern Virginia this afternoon. Uh, and um, I might chase this. I don't know. It's about 9.15 when I'm recording this. Um, we'll see what my uh, heart tells me, although I'll probably have to leave sooner than later if I'm going to get there from Charlotte in time. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, either way, though, a couple tornadoes are possible, so make sure you have that on your radar. Elsewhere, it is still going to be rainy. It's still going to be muggy through much of the southeast. We've had a lot of rain the past couple of days throughout uh, a lot of major cities. Charlotte has had flash flood warnings two days in a row here, uh, and uh, plenty of other major cities getting in on a lot of rain. So that's something definitely we're watching out for, and you can see that on radar. Again, a lot of rain this morning through Kentucky, Ohio, the Virginias, uh, and then even down into coastal sections of the Carolinas getting in on some uh, that action as well as back towards Texas. We've had a lot of rain in that area. Uh, so, you know, I haven't talked <clears throat> too much about that part of the country, but the South Central Plains have been getting in on it. Trust me, uh, plenty of rain has fallen out your way as well. And again, this overall pattern is going to continue through the next uh, at least week, really, um, and probably even longer than that. So. Uh, current watches, warnings, advisories, alerts, you know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we're pretty clear east of the Mississippi, although we do have some flood watches up for Norfolk, Richmond, Elizabeth City, Greenville, North Carolina, uh, into the New Bern area, uh, and kind of here through the Outer Banks. So again, a lot of rain has fallen through here. We're going to see more throughout uh, uh, today and um, really throughout much of the following week. So uh, watching out for that. Other than that, though, again, all clear through the eastern half of the country. This cloud cover and rainfall has tampered down on that heat. So not nearly as hot as we were seeing a week or two ago, which is nice. Uh, same can't be said for the West Coast, where we have plenty of heat advisories up for California, Nevada, uh, and up into the Northern Rockies. But all things considered, uh, again, a pretty quiet period. So we'll, uh, we'll take that and uh, run with it. Now, while it is a quiet period, we are unfortunately still going to be dealing with some flooding concerns, a slight risk up for excessive rainfall through much of the East Coast from kind of Philadelphia through D.C., Baltimore, Raleigh, uh, even down into the PD of South Carolina, the I-95 corridor of North Carolina, Richmond, Roanoke, uh, Hampton Roads area, Williamsburg, Virginia, the Delmarva, uh, again, a lot of areas in there. <clears throat> also back through Texas, again, this is an area that I don't mean to, but I've been neglecting a little bit, uh, slight risk of excessive rainfall through Dallas, uh, areas in and around Houston, Austin, San Antonio, uh, even into portions of New Mexico as well, uh, could see some of that. So uh, again, a lot of rain on the way, a lot has already fallen, and even into tomorrow, um, you know, more of that. And just kind of notice here how this is oriented. See how we kind of have this corridor of uh, excessive rainfall forecasted. Um, that's going to be a theme. Anywhere in between those two purple lines on your map, that's an area that's going to see a lot of rain through the next week. So uh, this is for tomorrow, but the map's going to be similar uh, through really the entirety of this week. This is Wednesday. Again, you'll notice really the same general idea. So again, watching out for that. Now, as I did mention, we do have a threat of some severe weather today, a marginal risk up for portions of the Delmarva. 
uh, through the Tidewater region of uh, southeastern Virginia and eastern North Carolina. This does include Raleigh, Greenville, North Carolina, New Bern, Elizabeth City, Roanoke, Hampton Roads, uh, the uh, Rappahannock area there of Virginia, um, and uh, even up through Richmond. So again, main threat today is actually tornadoes. That's the only reason that we have this threat level. Uh, could see some strong straight line winds as well, but a 2% area of uh, a tornado within 25 miles here in this region. Um, and it's not a threat that's off the chart, obviously, but uh, anytime we get a threat like this, this time of year when tornadoes are a little more uncommon, uh, it's definitely interesting to look at and it's something you're going to want to pay attention to. Also, I'll let you know, Likely, if we see tornadoes, you're not going to have much warning time. These are going to be quick spin-ups. They're going to be hard to detect on radar. Um, so just know if it's raining or if it's about to rain, there's a chance that there could be a quick spin-up. So go ahead and just take the precautions ahead of time uh, and you know try to avoid being outside, obviously, or, any under, or under any large trees or uh, anything like that. But the good news is any tornadoes in this setup should be relatively weak and should not last very long. So that is uh, the bit of good news with that. All right, let's time it out for you here into our Monday afternoon. Again, uh, we've already got some showers and storms this morning. As we get into this afternoon, though, we'll get more showers and storms to form, probably a little less in coverage than maybe we have seen the past couple of days, but anyone in the southeast, again, could see these strong storms. Also, again, specifically up into this region is where we have that tornado threat, uh, so we'll need to watch out for that throughout this afternoon and even into the evening, but overall, uh, same common theme, scattered showers, storms, and again, some embedded rotation there where we've been talking about. It. Uh, that continues through the overnight tonight. Scattered showers and storms continue into Tuesday afternoon. Uh, again, more of the same, probably a little less of a severe weather threat tomorrow, uh, but we'll watch it for you. Uh, and um, yeah, just kind of same old, same old. Again, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here and really dive into super big details. Just know if you live in the southeast, it could rain anytime from now uh, within the next 48 hours. So again, watching out for that including, again, flash flooding. As I mentioned, uh, these will be slow-moving storms, very heavy rainfall, uh, so we need to watch out for that as well. All right, what about the Northeast? Well, kind of more of the same. Uh, we've had a couple nice dry days in a row. That's going to probably change today and into this evening. This is about 8 o'clock Eastern tonight, noticing the map really blossoming, uh, excuse me, blossoming with precipitation, uh, especially for the southern tier of the Northeast and through the northern Mid-Atlantic. Widespread showers and storms through uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, even up into New York State, New York City. And eventually overnight tonight, we're kind of even going to get a little bit of a short wave to develop here. Uh, and strengthen some offshore. This is going to lead to pretty widespread showers and uh, some storms overnight tonight. It's going to be a rainy one uh, through much of Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, and even into uh, tomorrow morning here. Um, we're going to see more of that uh, occur during the morning hours, that shield of rain working on through. And then tomorrow afternoon, uh, more rain, although this time a little more isolated during the afternoon hours of Tuesday, more of that pop-up storm style compared to today, which could be a little more organized. So uh, again, severe weather could also be a threat up here with this setup. Uh, in fact, this is what's leading to that tornado threat into portions of Virginia and all. Uh, you'll notice that little low pressure kind of developing, enhancing wind shear there. Uh, and again, could bring some uh, areas of uh, increased rotation. So I'm just watching out for that. Uh, even, you know what, I'll kind of draw onto this. I know that severe weather threat's kind of further down here, but I wouldn't be surprised to even see a little bit of rotation up here into this region. So, um, you know, watch out for that. Again, something to monitor for sure throughout the day. All right, uh, Monday afternoon, today throughout uh, the Midwest, again, just kind of some pop-up showers and storms, maybe a little bit more of an organized complex of storms may try to develop here uh, in the northern tier of the Midwest through Minnesota and Wisconsin uh, during this afternoon and evening, but overall, severe weather threats pretty low, really just showers with some rumbles of thunder out of this. Um, and moving into the overnight tonight, that continues to work on through. Uh, and then Tuesday afternoon, we'll do it all again with more scattered showers and storms. Again, a couple could try to become strong to severe, but overall speaking, uh, pretty tame threat here. Just good old-fashioned summertime rain with some lightning and, again, maybe some isolated hail or strong winds. All right, South Central Plains, again, it's going to rain <laughs> uh, through Monday afternoon. I think flooding threat is a little bit bigger here, though, compared to portions of the Midwest, uh, especially this evening. Look at this, another band of very heavy rainfall likely to set up shop somewhere through Central Texas. And uh, this isn't the first day this has happened. This has happened the past couple of days. 
which has led to some flooding concerns and we'll likely have that again this afternoon and evening and even into the overnight uh, as that rain just kind of hangs out and again it could rain more overnight tonight this is getting into tomorrow morning widespread rain showers potentially in the south central plains uh, especially through arkansas louisiana and southeast texas uh, but then tomorrow afternoon for Tuesday, we'll do it all again. Uh, although that rain for Tuesday afternoon, I think, is going to be pushed a little bit further off towards the south and east. So uh, we'll see um, how that evolves. But again, rainfall threat for tomorrow afternoon, you'll even notice uh, kind of showing up here on this map uh, how that threat kind of shifts off south a little bit more. So um, again, excessive rainfall is going to be something to watch. But, uh, uh, you know, just kind of a theme throughout the whole week. So we'll need to watch that. Um, yeah, so again, kind of rambling there, but uh, that's uh, that's what we're looking at. All right, we'll quickly discuss the whole overall pattern, and then honestly, I'll let you go because uh, you know don't need to bore you to death if not all that much is happening. So. Uh, again, same general idea for this pattern, overall speaking. Uh, we've got a trough kind of stuck out over the central United States. We've also got a southeast ridge here, and shockingly enough, the southeast. Uh, and we're getting that flow between the two that is kind of funneling a corridor of a gulf moisture, uh, again, right into this region in between these lines, just like I showed you with that flooding thread. Uh, that's why we have it into this region, just enhanced uh, lift and enhanced precipitation or moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, is leading to those increased rain chances. And that's, again, a theme throughout much of this week. You'll notice that kind of hangs on. This is even getting into Friday uh, and into this coming weekend. And even moving this into the long range, um, it could still stay stormy, although maybe out of a different type of setup. But we'll, we'll talk about that more later on and in a different video. So one side effect of this is uh, it's going to be muggy. Again, this increase of dew points back into the forecast. Uh, now, one thing I will mention is we're getting a couple of glancing excuse me, glancing blows from some troughs out of Canada. So uh, this is getting into this Thursday, Friday. You'll notice we're getting some relief in the Northeast. Uh, that is possible. Again, we've got a couple fronts up into Canada that are trying to just clip the United States. Uh, so we could have some rounds of nicer weather up there. But again, it's going to be muggy now through at least Thursday. Then again, maybe a glancing blow of some drier air, especially New England uh, for Friday and into this weekend. Uh, but even then, that doesn't last forever. And those dew points come back. So Ohio River Valley South, it's going to stay muggy north of there. A couple days in between, we could have some nicer weather, uh, but all things considered, a pretty summer-like pattern. And as for precipitation, you'll be able to see these just waves of rain uh, just kind of following this general path uh, southeast to northeast along this flow out of the Gulf here. And I'm just going to, again, kind of breeze through this. Again, waves of uh, these kind of short waves working on through, bringing enhanced rainfall uh, now through much of this week uh, before, again, maybe longer range we can get a more pronounced front to try to swing on through, and we'll see. But uh, either way, rainfall is going to be a concern throughout the next seven days. A lot of it, especially down here into the Carolinas and into Texas. Texas. Uh, these are kind of the two hot spots here. Texas Gulf Coast down through Louisiana uh, and the Carolinas and Georgia, a lot of rain. But again, we've been in drought through some of these regions, so it's good that we're putting a dent in it. Probably even honestly going to get rid of it uh, by the time we're getting into uh, the end of July and start of August. So definitely uh, some good news there. Alrighty, y'all. Well, again, I appreciate you hanging in there. Uh, again, kind of dog days of summer here, boring weather, but uh, I have a feeling that won't last for long and we'll probably miss these boring time periods come uh, August, September, uh, and onward throughout the rest of the year. So uh, with that said, I appreciate it. Y'all have a great rest of your Monday. Enjoy your week and I'll see you all tomorrow.